Hello, this is for day 257 of Bible in one year and our Bible text Proverbs chapters 19 to 21 and then 2 Corinthians chapter 7. So let's begin with Proverbs chapter 19. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his sleeps and is a fool. Also, let the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverted his way, and his heart fretted against the Lord. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princess. The discretion of a man deferred his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's right is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. <coughs> Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he had given will be pay him again. Will he pay him again? <coughs> Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall, shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel and receive instructions, that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. There are many devices in a, in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord. That shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. <coughs> the fear of the Lord tended to life, and he that had it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it, as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware, and reprove one that had understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He that wasted his, his father, and chased away his mother, is a son that causes shame, and bringeth reproach. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to ear from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness corneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. Proverbs chapter 20 Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion, whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. The sluggard will not blow by reason of the, of the cold, therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will dry it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a fruitful man who can find. The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. A king that seated in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin. Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye the Lord had made, even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer. But when he is gone his way, then he boasted. There is gold in a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. 
Every purpose established by counsel, and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a tale-bearer re revealeth secrets, therefore meddle not with him that fluttereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. The verse, waits are an abomination, and to the Lord, sorry, I'll repeat that. The verse, waits are an abomination, and to the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord, how can a man then understand his own way? It is a snare to the man who devoureth, the which is holy, and after, and after vows to make inquiry. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old, old men is a gray head. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. Proverbs chapter 21 the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of the man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. An high look and a proud heart, and the blowing of the wicked is seen. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of every one that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by, by a lying tongue is a vanity, Toss to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, because they refuse to do judgment. The way of man is forward and strange, but as for the fewer, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of the house top than with the brawling women in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret falsifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man, he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous, and the transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with the contentious and an angry woman. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but the foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty, and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, whoso dealeth is in proud wrath, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refused to labor. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination, how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against a day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Okay, we now go to Second Corinthians chapter 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before, that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great, it, great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my glorifying of you, I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation, 
For when we were come into Macedonia, our, fle our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without our things, within were fears. Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle had made you sorry, though it were but for a reason, for a season. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold the self same thing, that ye sorrowed after a good, godly sort, what carefulness it is wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what seal, yea, what revenge. In all things we have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it, not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we speak all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. <coughs> and this inward affection is more abundant toward you, while he remembereth the vigilance of you all. How with fear and trembling he received him. I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things. Alright, we're done with the Bible reading. So again, this is for the 257, a Bible in one year, and we've read Proverbs chapters 19 to 21 and then 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Thank you and God bless.